Hi there, David Taylor of Mr. Pelagonium back with another video for the Pelagonium and Geranium Society. Uh, today I'm actually going to repot a plant. We're going to do a little bit of a review of one or two of my uh, hybrid regals that I've bred this year. Uh, just a little bit of a catch up because it's been again a couple of weeks since I've done a video. Um, I'm filming this very early in the morning of the 6th of July, uh, Wednesday today. Uh, primarily I have to get these done early because it gets really warm in the greenhouse. We're into July, the weather's warming up in the UK now and realistically the cameras just can't cope with filming in the heat. So we carry on and let's have a look to see what we're going to get up to. Hi, well, it's good to see you again. Um, I am actually going to publish the uh, the national show video this afternoon. I was editing it uh, yesterday. That's I'm going to get that out this afternoon, so you'll have seen that by the time you see this one. Right now, today I'm actually just going to deadhead and repot um, one or two of the plants that I've actually. Well, I'll show you one. I've got several to do actually, but. I'll run through one of them. And what I do with some of my exhibition plants now, this can be done with any plants that you've got in the greenhouse realistically at this time of year. A number of my particularly zonals didn't put on enough bulk during the, uh, the main growing season. And this one, which I've grown on as a floribunda in the last year. Now, a floribunda in show terms is just basically a plant, a dwarf plant, grown in a bigger pot, in a six inch pot. Normally a dwarf will be shown in a four and a half or 12 centimeter pot, uh, but we grow them sometimes a bit bigger if you want to uh, grow them on uh, as a slightly bigger plant. But I will repot it in the hope that for the rest of the summer, it'll put on some bulk and really begin to uh, move up to the size that I want it to be by next show season, realistically. Now, you can do this to any plants that you've got. Uh, if you've got plants that are maybe looking a little bit tired, often a trim back of the roots and a repot will give them the kick that you want to give them. So it's important to just keep sort of repotting them at least yearly and preferably even a bit more than that. But for show purposes, I want to get this up into uh, the repot situation now. If I really did trim the roots down hard, I would potentially depot it a certain extent and then get it up to its six inch pot later in the summer or even in the early autumn. But I think in the case of this one, well, well, we'll just see how the roots go. We'll, we'll see how big it is in the root. We'll look at that together now uh, and go on from there. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is just disbud, much like I showed in the, uh, in the last video that I did there. Um, really, just get rid of all these blooms. The majority of them are going over, but I've enjoyed the plant as it is, actually. Uh, so I'm just going to get rid of all these blooms. So I'll just speed through that uh, while I do it. Okay, well there we are. I've just sort of completed that now. I've just run that through. 
got rid of a few leaves as well. Um, now the question that I do ask myself really is whether potentially this could grow on better as actually a dwarf. I'm going to take this out of the um, of its pot now. All I'm doing now is lifting this out. There we go. It's got a good root system on it. Um, it's clean as a whistle down there. Absolutely no sign of mealybug or anything in the pot, which is good. I'll drop the uh, label there. We'll talk about labels in a moment because someone had a query on a label. Right, uh, I've just moved the camera up so you can see because I'm, I'm going to drop this now. But we've got a lovely clean root ball. So all I'm going to do now is just knock back this compost. Um, it's, it's a simple thing to do really. It is quite dry. I give it a little bit of a base water last night, but there's no, this is all a very clean root ball. Um, I'm just going to check the label actually. This was repotted in August last year. So um, I'm quite pleased it's kept clear of the mealy bug. The good thing about doing this as well is it enables you to clean the plant up. Uh, I'm going to grab my tweezers just to pull some bits off. Uh, sorry, if I pot this down to a dwarf, I've got to lose the bulk of this um, root ball. I don't really want to go much smaller than that. Just clear, continuing to sort of clean up the bits and pieces, any dead leaves, overgrown stipules and that kind of thing. I've cut back a lot of that root. It won't mind at all, but I will pot that now into a five inch pot and then pot it up further in the uh, late summer or early autumn as a, uh, in its full Floribonda pot, its six inch pot. But that will grow, that will give it a bit of a boost now. And that's what I intend to do. Okay, so there we are. Um, we're gonna get this into a five inch pot. I have actually, I have actually had to turn the camera off <laughs> uh, again, because it's just getting too hot. So we'll just quickly bash this in. We don't need a lot of base compost there. Uh, we're going into a five inch pot, so we have gone down a little bit. It's my standard mix of compost. Uh, probably put a little smidge more in there actually. Uh, which is about a third drainage material. I use a lot, use a lot of drainage material. Um, and then just sort of line it up. Right, okay, now. <laughs> One of the problems with filming this on a hot day, um, the camera just gave up basically for the second half of that pot up. Um, but I've just completed that. I think you saw the beginning of it, which I've been able to, to see there. Um, now, something that I did speak about was labeling um, because somebody queried the fact that, uh, you know, what, what do you do with your labeling? Well, on the label, I've got the name of the plant and the date that the cutting was taken. And on the back, I just purely list all of the dates that it was repotted. So there's a potted history there. This one was repotted originally in the August. It was, the cutting was taken in July 20. Uh, it was repotted in the August, potted up, basically would have been into a three and a half inch pot. Uh, and I list basically each of the uh, the dates that it gets potted on or repotted or whatever. So it's a potted history of the plant so that I know when it was potted. Uh, certainly in the early days, that means that you know when, when to continue to give it water initially because there's enough feed in the compost to keep it going um, and when to sort of potentially move over to feeding. So that's basically what the labelling does and how I do my labelling. Right, so what I will do now, this will get a clean saucer uh, and I will tell I know the root ball is pretty dry. So um, that's going to get a saucer full of water with a clean saucer. And I've got some fresh water here. I'll just mine that one out of the way and I will fill that up. Now, 
that's been given what I know it's dry. Now, a tip that is being given out by quite a few growers uh, and pelagonium experts, we're in hot weather territory now. So I have mentioned it before, but certainly in a glass house, if you've got plants in a glass house and it gets really hot, they, they, your plants will effectively shut down and go into like a winter mode. So don't go over watering your pellies. Give them a little bit if they're dry, but just more or less go into winter water mode, which is just a little bit in the bottom of the saucer, enough for them to uh, sort of soak up. Because what can happen if you've got your root ball full of water, for instance, say this one, if it's full of water and there's water covering most of that sort of root ball, um, it's fine in cooler conditions, but when it gets really hot, that water will get really warm and it will begin to burn the roots. And effectively, the plants just go into a sort of, uh, I mean, you can effectively kill the plant. But so your pellies go into a bit of a rest mode. So just be very careful with your watering of your plants during warm weather in a glass house in particular. And even outside, if it gets really hot, just go very careful with your watering. Don't go overdoing it because you'll kill them. Right, now something that I have been experimenting with, uh, particularly for plants where I've got a number of cuttings from or younger plants that are growing on, um, is cutting down some of the older regals uh, to leave basically one stem. If I've got a relatively straight stem in there, to grow on as a standard. Now, I've always mentioned that growing Pelagonium regal standards is not an easy task because all they want to do ultimately is bush and grow. Right, so here's one then that I decided to have an experiment with. Um, I'm just fast forwarding through this cutting back of one of my regals. Uh, it's one of my own, um, but all the time I'm just slowly clipping back and looking to see whether I've got any straightish stems. Now, it's not a, a totally, it's not rocket science this, it's uh, just looking down at the plant all of the time. This is quite a big plant. It's a cup to about three years old, this plant. I've had it for quite a while. It's not really done what I wanted it to do for shows, so I can just have a muck about with this. I've got a few cuttings of it, so it's not a problem. Um, but there we are. I'm just continually cutting it back and looking to see whether I've got any straightest stems. So this is stems where you've got some dark, sort of perhaps slightly older wood with a relatively straight green shoot stem coming sort of throughout the top of it that re retains the straightness all the way through. You can see me here, I'm just deliberating as to wh what's left. I think I leave myself with about two stems, not many anyway. Uh, and there we are, two left. Right, so we're left with, basically we've got two long shoots. This is definitely the straighter one. Uh, this one's a bit more buckled, so we're almost certainly going to run with this one here. Uh, it's much straighter. I just need to cut a few bits off this uh, side panel here. This stem's just got a few side shoots coming out, which I will remove. Uh, and we're going to run with that one. Uh, so all I'm going to do now is cut those off. Um, get rid of this root ball, get rid of this side shoot here um, and repot it.
Okay, so there's the uh, the final cut, cut back stem, which we would probably um, plant up to about that point. Now, because I've actually done quite a bit of cutting back on that, I'm actually going to let that stay dry for a little while to get all these cuts sealed off uh, before I repot it. Um, but, you know, that's done the job. It's quite long. It's, it's about 9 to 10 inches long um or uh, 28 centimeters long i would guess uh and it really does um get the uh the standard off to a a good start so that's something that i'm experimenting with and we'll see how successful it is some of the hybrids i mean i spoke earlier about some of my hybrids have been pretty decent actually uh this one in particular this violet one if you go back and have a look at my um video on the regals this is 2108 and i think this has got a lot of show potential this one one or two of the pelts does need a little bit of a dead head um but there are one or two seed heads coming which i uh i might just take they're not crosses that i've done they're just bee crosses uh basically because I, i'm letting the bees in now but um i think that's got a lot of show potential that particular one because it's throwing a lot of bloom Right now, a video that I will do, I think after this one, I'm going to go around the garden. A lot of my plants are outside now. Really, the plants that I've got left in the glass house now are really my exhibition plants. Uh, one or two of the smaller standards and some of the regals. Everything else is outside uh, because that's where realistically they do better, to be quite honest. So that just about wraps up this video for now. Right, something else to look forward to is a video about training plants. One or two bubbling under there. Lots of comments about Tom Kirkland's amazing fan of Frank Headley, uh, which won the National this year. Mm, a few things I'll have to think about there, I think. So we'll have a look at that in the future as well. Don't forget, if you're not subscribed, think about subscribing and turn on your notifications so you get alerted when I release a new video. Um, but in the meantime, happy growing. Look after your plants in this summer period and I'll see you again very soon. Bye bye for now.